So uh, I'm John Mortensen from Thinkatron Productions. Um, we do all kinds of wacky stuff, uh, um, a lot of webcasting, uh, stuff for esports and clients like that. And we like black magic gear, all that stuff, and we love the DVE store. So what we've got going here is we've got um, kind of your typical black magic setup with a 2ME and the 1ME control panel. Um, uh, intercom here, uh, uh, Clearcom intercom, the Atomos recorders over here. I think all of this stuff has come from the DVE store. So on this shoot, we're running a, uh, two of the Blackmagic studio cameras with B4 lenses, uh, along with one robo camera. And the robo camera controls are here. We're also using one of the Scarhoff uh, controllers here for painting the cameras, adjusting iris. Um, and adjusting zoom and focus on the robo camera. So all this stuff sort of works as a little small production package that uh, the Shogun is typically uh, used as just a, a master color monitor because frankly I trust the color of this a lot more than sort of the bluish black magic uh, look that they have. So um, this is kind of a small production package but is typical of uh, what we do um, and what we use for these kinds of shows. Um, this is a rack mount package, um, uh, but we also have this sort of a package with the 1ME switcher that's in a fly pack configuration that we can fly in, I think, six or seven Pelican cases. The RoboCam is controlled here like this, pan and tilt our remote head out there, and then we're able to uh, zoom and focus uh, with the Skarkov. So all that stuff and all that control goes down the SDI control uh, line to the Blackmagic uh, micro camera and uh, uh, the, the Scarho actually is just a control panel, external control panel for it. So if we took a, take a look at camera one here, we can adjust iris up and down here remotely on the B4 lens through the B4 link. It's an ethernet connected um, uh, B4 link, which is a little blue box on the front of that. And so that all talks with this. Um, and again, this is just a remote control for the actual software here. So this really does what this does, but in a push button, nice big button control fashion. Um, so all of these things can be done on the software as well, uh, but it's nicer to have a, a little knob here. It's a little more, a little more nimble that way uh, to, to control things. It's uh, again, sort of a fail safe situation uh, for uh, if the panel takes a poop. Um, uh, so, you know, you can switch the show here, but like you've got to be able to turn off the audio channels because by default the studio cameras turn on when you hook them in. So you'll have live audio from those guys coming through the, coming through the, the setup. So typically on all these things we bring an audio guy with us and uh, so, you know, that's handled over here and we just take, take, a, take an XLR feed in and it comes in and, and is then SDI encoded and we go straight to the recorders over here like that or out to um, you know, an MPEG-4 recorder or something like that. It just comes into the back of the ATEM and then the ATEM embeds it and then uh, that way everything's all timed correctly so when it gets to the recorders there's no, there's no delay or anything like that. No graphics on this show. Yeah, these are just simple uh, camera straight in uh, type shows and basically camera direct to tape and then they take it and run it. So this is a, a C-SPAN show here. So yeah, these are our tapes here. You know, these, these are our tapes here. So yeah, switch all to SSD for all that recording. Uh, stops kind of using Spain drives now and SSDs are so cheap and fast and reliable. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, the, the, the clean switch, honestly, that's just here. If the switcher takes a poop, then I can switch the show on the sw clean switch. So, so, you know, whenever you can bring it back up. Um, so, uh, but that's what I use that for, yeah. Uh, we had some specific needs for this clean switch, uh, but um, uh, now it's just here really as a spare, a hot spare. Now it's completely smooth. Super pro crew, yeah, great, yeah, no, no problems. The, the Roland, that VH1 HD thing, yeah. that's a terrific switcher. On, on the road, I'm gonna be buying a second one. Uh, because we, we're switching uh, iMag with it, yeah. and it's, it's terrific. Uh, the way we're using it, we're not really seeing lip sync up there, so it's really for routing graphics, multiple graphics machine, and, and playback to, to RP, and so uh, haven't had any problems with it, but it's a really terrific, wacky little device, and it has lots of wacky secrets 
that's the thing that we discovered is you know we actually opened the manual up so we basically have three laptops feeding it and then we actually fed it with a hyper deck for playback which is kind of interesting and so what we did is we took the decimators and um, fed HDMI into them and then split off um, one signal to um, to the switcher and the second signal came into the switcher so I had SDI in here and HDMI into the sub-switch basically, and then we came out of that to the projection. So it, the decimator was a great find with that. The, the DAC 70s would do that too, but the decimator was really great because we had all those outputs hanging out the back of it and convertible. So uh, that was a that's a really great great situation. Uh, just one DAC 70. It's out there to shake the uh, the PowerPoint. So yeah, so and and it's because it was yeah it's it's uh, it's uh, VGA. So, so we had to shake it with that. So we've got, we've got three cameras. We've got two uh, Blackmagic Studio cameras with B4 lenses and one uh, micro, what is it, macro, what do they call it? micro camera, micro, micro studio. studio. And then we have a fourth input, which is uh, VGA through a DAC 70 uh, for the PowerPoint. So the, the, the DAC 70 is taking care of the conversion of that to SDI. So my, uh, typical way of working is to eliminate every ounce of HDMI so wherever I'm at if I'm converting something I convert it out of HDMI as soon as possible to to uh, SDI uh, just to get that out of the way because the biggest headaches we've had is with HDMI a absolutely the absolute biggest headaches so 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 I don't have any HDMI cables that are longer than that long because that, that, you know, any device that you sort of, it doesn't work and you unplug and plug it and then it works, it kind of like worries me. So that's really kind of been the strategy that we've used for, for, for engineering these, these setups. Yeah, Clearcom, Clearcom rig, which is really, really great. Um, we have an RTS system as well. Um, would not recommend RTS, at least at the lower and professional level. The, the rack unit's a little flaky and does not take program audio, which is important for us to have in the comms. It, it, it does it, but they have a program in, but it's actually designed to interface with some other box to get it at the right level. It's really wacky. So, so the, the ClearCom seems to be a much better solution that way. And, and so what we've chosen to do is rather than use the Blackmagic system, we actually have camera cables that have, uh, it's, a, it's, it's two SDI and one audio. So we actually are running kind of a classic uh, uh, intercom second, uh, second line down there. And then the two, the two, the program and the SDI feed are returned so that we have control of the cameras. We feed back intercom audio back through there and through there. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's that's how I how I listen to it. So, yeah, it works out pretty good. We've got two discrete channels and a talent channel. So it's really a three-channel intercom. And um, and then the big brother to this, which is a rack mountable version, they have a two and a four-channel version of that. But these guys, I, I swear by, them. bulletproof sounds great, works perfect. Is that the modern? Is that the latest? Version or is this, a more this one? This is this is brand new. Yeah, this is brand new. Yeah, okay. yeah. It certainly comes in that kind of old school yeah, box. But hey, it, it's, it's but you know, it's, it's great. Trick. It really is great. Yeah. The reason I have this and I get nothing but crap from everybody on the crew. <laughs> so like when I was a kid, like I got in TV really. You'll be young and all the directors had these. So I've always wanted one. But honestly, <laughs> like when we're doing some of these shows, I mean we're on air for 10, 12 hours a day. So you just get cauliflower ear, and this thing, you know, you, you, you don't as bad. So, you know, yeah. You look like you're doing dictation or something, but I don't care. The thing that, for me, sold us on Black Magic was, first of all, it was the, the ability to have IP-based controlled switchers and control devices. That's been really big for us. And so m being able to control multiple levels of the switcher at the same time by different people and all that sort of stuff. So uh, in our bigger shows, the graphics operator will handle a lot of the, the, the loading and the readying of the graphics and things like that. Um, um, and, and so that was really big for us. And also the, the ability to use alpha channel graphics through the media players was another thing that, that really sold us on the Blackmagic stuff. And that it was you know HDSDI based and that was really important for our workflow. Uh, again, the, the struggles with HDMI was something, is something that we, we try to avoid. So that's kind of why we went that direction. We, we like it.